e ngā mana i ngā reo i ngā rangatira mā, tēnā rā koutou, nau mai whakarongo mai ki te hōtaka nei a ko tōku pōti tērā. Kia ora, my name is uh, Toi Kairako Iti and welcome to My Vote, a show that seeks to empower you, to Im- inform you and engage you with your local government electoral process so that your vote counts. Koena te kaupapa o tēnei uh, hōtaka. This morning, e mā, we have three mayoral candidates in the whare here at Tumeki FM. We have Pauroto Narupo. We have Julie Jukes and we have Russell Orr. All of them are going for the mayoral seat. Russell is all in. It's mayor or nothing. Uh, Pauroto and Julie uh, are going for council seats also. Actually, Pauroto, you're going also for a community board uh, seat. So I'm going to pass it over to each of you to introduce yourselves. Kia ora, Julie. Kia ora. Hi, Julie Jukes here and um, I'm a two-term Whakatane Ahopi Ward councillor and um, I have a footwear and fashion business for Rosita's on the Strand and um, my background is I'm a chartered accountant and I am passionate about this district and am standing for the mayoralty as is already discussed and I've been told to keep it brief so I'll leave it there. <laughs> well done, well done. Good, good on you, Julie. Kia ora, Russell. Yeah, kia ora. Uh, my name's Russell Law and... Um, I'm a uh, fifth term councillor, so it's 15 years of uh, Wakatane District Council, so it's time to uh, go hard or go home, and uh, I put my name forward for the mayoralty, and uh, I've been a policeman in this area, of course, for 21 years, most people know that, and uh, a businessman, a Kiri Fruit Orchardist, and um, currently chair of the hearings committee, I'm the uh, district licensing commissioner, and so I keep myself busy. Kia ora tātou, kia ora toi, nā au i pohiri mai mātou ki a haera mai te rangine ki te whakaputai o mātou whakaaro. O ti rā tēnā tātou katoa te iwi a whakarongo mai ana ki a mātou, ko hau tēnei, ko tō koutou pononga, take take ake nō ku tēnei rohe, nō te kāinga hau, ko mātātua tōku waka, ko putaua ki tōku maunga, ko ngātiawa tōku iwi. Ko hau tēnei, ko pauroto ngarupo, e mihi mai au hātu nei kia koutou katoa. Really pleased to be here with uh, Julie and also with Russell. Thank you, Toy, for giving us the opportunity to be with you today. Looking forward to the questions. Uh, look, my passion uh, for the council started back in 1992 when one of the projects my grandmother had asked me to do in 1978 was to get our family canoe back that once was in the middle of our town over here at the rock pit known as Pohatudo Rock. So from that time, to now I've really had a passion about bringing communities together from a Māori and a Pākehā perspective. Thank you for having us today. Kia ora. Kia ora, kia ora Pairoto. See the benefits of being bilingual? You get twice the time. <laughs> <laughs> kia ora, kia ora, kia ora koutou. Thanks for being here. Um, we're going to jump straight into the, the awkward seat. I, I did uh, warn uh, yourselves, Russell and Julie, that we were going to be talking about uh, some of the the, the racial issues, I, I guess, because we're here on, on Tumiki FM. Uh, both of you have talked to me about, uh, well, you both voted against the Māori warts, and as a consequence of that, in this campaign for both of you, you have had to uh, push yourselves through the mire on, on, on Facebook uh, and other mediums uh, because people have viewed your stance around the Māori wards as a racist stance. Now, I'm sure both of you uh, don't feel like you're a racist in, in, in um, voting against the Māori wards. I'd like to give you guys the mic now and, and explain why you voted against the Māori wards. Kia ora, Julie. Kia ora, thank you. Um, it was, in my six years, it was definitely one of the hardest decisions that we've ever had to make, and it's had... Um, probably the the biggest discussion out in the community as well so for me it was probably more on I I just I just believe that um, it's it, it is a merit thing that um, I know that all all of the Maori candidates are just as good as I am and can get there on their own merit so um, it, as I said very very hard um, and something that um, is certainly not a racist issue for me. 
I'm definitely not racist. I've supported Māori over my six years that I have been on council and will definitely continue to do that. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Tui. Look, for me, the issue is slightly different. Um, I know that uh, previously uh, the council had tried to implement Māori wards and it went to a referendum and 70% of the, the people in our district voted against it. So I was of the view that it probably wasn't widely accepted by the district. And I, I tried to get uh, council to agree to go straight to a referendum, but in the end they wouldn't. Now look, I know Maori don't like things imposed upon them by Pākehā, so why would Pākehā want Maori to impose things upon them? It's got to be with the agreement of the whole district, or we're not going anywhere. I don't like separatism. Pōtoto, you running in the, oh, of course you've got no choice, There's, there is no Māori ward or no Māori mayor, um, so you're running in the mayoral race in the general electorate. What's your view on Māori wards? Well, in 1840, um, that's when the Treaty of Waitangi was signed, right here actually in Whakatane on 16th of June. So that really was uh, a covenant and a relationship and acknowledgement that uh, by right we as Mana Whenua, Iwi Taketake, uh, had... Um, to maintain our mana whenua rights and all decision-making levels uh, that gave the uh, partnership true meaning in terms of us having true uh, representation throughout. Um, so uh, my view is that uh, Māori representation reflects the community in which we live. We have seven iwi. Um, we also have, well, according to the New Zealand statistics, we have 48% Māori. Um, so I think the relationship needs to reflect the Treaty of Waitangi, partnership, protection of the, the, the assets and the taonga that we have here, and having a voice right across the community would seem the appropriate thing to do in terms of acknowledging the treaty and the relationships for our Māori seats within council. Okay, so do you support Māori wards or not? I support Māori wards. Oh, no, absolutely. Yes, I do. Um, I'm going to come back to you uh, again, Russell, because uh, with your decision to, to not support Māori wards and, and the publicity around that, uh, you also did make a couple of comments uh, that Māori, many Māori, did take exception to. Uh, that was your interview on Radio New Zealand, where you said that uh, one good aspect of having Māori wards would be that you wouldn't be dragged off the marae. Do you still stand by that comment? That was a throwaway line, and I'm not even sure I remember saying that on Radio New Zealand. I think that was said off air. But um, be that as it may, um, I, I think the imposition of Mary Wards upon the district was the issue I was trying to highlight. Um, we, I don't want to be dragged onto Marae. And I don't want um, Maori wards imposed upon people who don't want to have that happen to them. And as I said, Maori don't want to have things imposed upon them either. We're not going to get anywhere by um, forcing people to do stuff. I found that out a long time ago. Look, um, we did very well this time around in a referendum. I say we because I'm Maori too. It went from 70% down to about 54%. There's a reasonable chance... If, if we do this properly, there'll be Maori wards within six years. Sure, you say you're Maori as well, but also another comment that you did make uh, in that Radio New Zealand interview was that you questioned who, the, who is Maori and who isn't Maori and the definition of Maori. Absolutely. I didn't know I was Maori until I was about 20 because it was a dirty secret in our family. Mm. In those days, no one was proud of being Maori. And so I was brought up in a generation that taught me not to be proud of my heritage. And it wasn't until I was later in life that I was able to find out about it and research it. And I'm now proud of it because I found out more about it. But that doesn't mean that um, the Maori can be anyone they want to be. Uh, to me, it's, it is about race. You, you've got to have some Maori blood. I see some about percentage. Yeah. That there is a percentage you think that you need to meet a benchmark of, of whakapapa before you can define yourself as Māori? I think that would be fair enough. Otherwise, you've got the silly scenario. We've got people with no Māori heritage whatsoever calling themselves Māori. I don't know if that's right. As a Māori myself... No 
Yeah, no fuck papa. Yeah, yeah. I've, I haven't heard of, heard of that. But in terms of if you do have fuck a papa, you think that there should be a qualification, a, a definite amount, say 50%, say, before you can define yourself as Māori. Is that your view? Well, my view, of course, that race doesn't matter at all. You know, it, it's, it's only um, the current environment that says that you have to be Māori. I mean, we're talking about Māori seats, aren't we? So what qualifies you to be um, uh, and a voter on a Maori seat? Nothing. You can choose to be a Maori if you want to be. So how is that helping the situation at all when you could essentially have a whole lot of Pākehā deciding that they're Maori, voting for Maoris on Maori wards? That'd be a bit confusing, wouldn't it? It would. It confuses me. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, uh, you um have had a bit of... Uh, um, pushback on your social media um, about your stance. You said that it, it's been quite difficult for you. How are you dealing with that? Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, a lot of the comments weren't actually on my Facebook page. They were actually on the one double X Facebook page. So um, I, I didn't want to get into an argument. So I decided not to start debating the issue on somebody else's Facebook page. Um, I have sort of said that um, I'm happy to debate the, the issue at any time and, and justify the stance that I made. Um, and I want, you know, I want to engage. I want to get, um, I want, I want to get better in that sp- in the space. Yeah. Better in, in which space? In Tareo and learning. I'm very keen to actually learn in that in that space because, as I, I said just in the break room, I mean. Um, if I want to represent this district, I need to do better in that space to represent all the people that are actually in the district. So you're quite, you're quite right there. The mayoralty, which you're all going for, is a in large part a PR job as well, isn't it? You you are the the literal and figurative head of the district, and you're representing all of the people inside of that district. And I'm glad to hear you say, Julie, that you are wanting to improve your knowledge around te reo and your knowledge around kaupapa Māori. Um, my challenge would be, uh, for myself and for many Māori, hearing the word Māori, because it was used in a very uh, dis- disparaging way for many, many years, are those Māoris. Um, I'll throw that back to you, Russell. Are you prepared as a male candidate to improve your reo and to use the word Māori when you say Māori, do you think that if you started to say Māori that that may actually disenfranchise you from a certain demographic within your electorate? Yeah. No, not at all. The, the truth, Toy, is I'm probably too old to learn uh, another language. Oh, you're never too old. It's easy, <laughs> Māori. <laughs> yeah, no. Māori, it's easy. Oh, no, I, I understand. Yes, I could probably try. And it, it would be on my list of stuff to do. I'm not, I'm not averse to it at all. But, that's uh, good. That's good to hear as a mayoral candidate that you are willing to, to make that growth. Yeah, um, it's to be honest, it's not my number one priority. I'm not just going to go out there now and commit. But everything. I would say, actually, as a mayor, this is what I'm saying. You are not only the mayor of Fakatani, You're going to be the mayor of Murupara. You are going to be the mayor of Taniatua. You're going to be the mayor of Waimana and Muruatuki. As a as the leader of those those communities, that it is actually upon you to pronounce the word properly. And, and and understand that those communities feel disenfranchised by you using the word or pronounce the, the pronunciation of it as Maori. Yeah, and it, that's fair comment too. Um, however, they can all understand me, and that's the most important the, thing. The main point, I guess the, the point I'm saying is that when you say Maori, it makes us feel as Maori. So it makes, you, it makes us feel that our mayor doesn't care enough to pronounce it Maori. We may understand you, of course we understand you, but the implication that comes with it, the subtext... Yeah. Well, as I said, look, the, my upbringing was not as a Maori. I was brought up as a Pakiha. Mm. And now I'm 64 years old. It's not going to be an easy uh, change for me to make. One word at a time, Russell. Yeah, one, uh, one word at a time. Well, I'm happy to try it. Kapai. Uh, Pairoto, now we're going to move on to what you believe. Uh, also, do you want to make a comment on that too, Pairoto? I just wanted to say that in 2010, one of the, when I was elected uh, as, as councillor, then uh, one of the suggestions I had asked uh, the mayor and council to consider was actually to have one of our council me- uh, meetings on the marae, which we actually did. Mm. We had it at Tamanaka Tutahi Marae. So 
I, I, I think it's really imperative if we're going to uh, improve our trust with our Māori constituents, our Māori community, our communities right across the region. Uh, you know, one of the things that I have uh, suggested in, uh, in my policies is that we need to have full engagement. Mm. So one of the things I think we need to be doing is going out to our communities a lot more, our churches, our community halls, places and spaces and locations, particularly for 48% of our population here, where we can fully engage them and be accountable in the decisions that we make. So I, I, that's my, 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 my view in terms of the importance of the engagement on Marae. Marae is a, an extension of the Whakatane District Council. That's our, that's our district Marae. So I, I, I see that myself as an important part of our accountability as mayor or councillors and also our communication. And that would be an important thing for us to to consider, especially moving into the new council. Can I just jump in here a bit? Look, I don't like to um, um, wave my own flag on this, but um, as chair of the hearings committee, many years ago, um, we had a consent hearing involving Taifa Kai. And we said, we'll go out there and talk to them on the Marae. And we did that, and it was never broadcast from the from the hills, it was just something we did because it seemed appropriate to do. Mm. And I've been doing that for years and I'll continue to do that as and when it's appropriate. We will engage with people in an environment that makes them comfortable. Mm. Just in terms of Māori pronunciation, I, I believe that as part of local government, um, we need to also align to central government expectations uh, in terms of our policies. The Prime Minister has just launched Māmaihi Corona, which was in Wellington this year, at Matatini, and the expectation of all New Zealanders, including us as local council, is to support the development and preservation of Te Reo Māori, uh, which, which is a statute, is Te Reo Māori Language Act in Parliament. So what we have to do is, is think about the importance of that as part of our heritage and culture of the district. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we only have 121,000 speakers of the reo nationally. What this policy that the government is now telling us and guiding us as local council to, to do is develop te reo Māori strategies. By 2040, we hope to achieve one million speakers of the reo. Because, I mean, that, that is the question when we start talking about, you know, we're one people, Russell, yourself, you said, uh, that you don't see race, that just people in one New Zealand. Uh, and, I, and I've heard that quoted all before. My question has always been, well, which one are we? Are we the Pākehā New Zealand or are we the Māori New Zealand? And initiatives like that definitely help balance that up because I, I would say that Māori hasn't featured as, as highly in the, uh, the one New Zealand whakaro. Um We've gone, well, we're two people. But there is a place where, in the future, where we can come together and share in our, our differences, but in our commonality. And like you were saying, you don't want to be have Māori forced on you like uh, Māori don't want Pākehā forced on them. Historically, we haven't had a choice and it has been forced upon us. Um, so maybe this is the pendulum swinging back the other way for a brighter future, Russell. Look, absolutely. The one point I want to make that um, I, I've made it once before, but it, it hasn't got much traction, is look, you, you referred to it, Toy. You, you said my demographic might not be happy if I started um, talking to Raya. Well, I'll There's put a it, particular demographic, yeah, which uh, we all know about. Which, yeah, that's which, right. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to say who it is. But I, I can tell you this. I'm better placed to move that demographic. I'm better placed to bring two peoples together than, um, than maybe Paroto is. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I would do that. I honestly I, I do. I agree with you there. And, um, it, hey, if you started saying Māori instead of Māori, perhaps they all start to say Māori instead of Māori, potentially. Uh, small steps, eh? Small, small steps. steps. <laughs> One word at a time. That's all you said. And, and I love, actually, you were saying you're, you're getting on in years. Um, you know, we're all living a bit longer, so, you know, you're, you're sort of midlife potentially, uh, Russell, but I, I love a good redemption story too around, around, around these things. You know that um, looking back on, on past 
uh, perspectives and going, actually, I have learnt and grown and, and that you can do that at any age. I, I do love those kinds of stories. So I actually agree with you there, Russell. I think you do play an important part bridging between those communities because ultimately we do want to find a, a uh, community that is walking forward together, don't we, Julie? That's um, what we do need to be doing, and um, I am Pakeha. I don't. You don't claim to be Maori. No, I okay. look. I, I I I don't think it would be right to because I don't have any of that heritage. Sure. So I obviously have a bigger bridge and a gap than possibly you know the other candidates. But what I can offer is the willingness and the preparedness to actually do it, um, and it would be small steps at a time but I think the most important thing is is that willingness and um, the ability to to learn and you know wanting to go into that more into that space. Kakapa, Julie. I'll, I'll stay on you um, for my next question which is around uh, as I mentioned you'll be the mayor of uh, Te Teko, you'll be the mayor of Murupara, you'll be the mayor of Ruatuki. Uh, what are you going to do for these small communities who largely feel forgotten about in, in the Fakatani district because the larger voter base and the larger rating units are in Fakatani? Yeah. Um, this has been a conversation as I've been going around the Meet the Candidate Hui that a lot of the community feel like Ohope get the flash toilets, uh, Fakatani get their parks mowed with the catcher on. Uh, whereas these smaller communities feel a little bit left out in terms of infrastructure and services. What are you as Mayor of Whakatane District going to do to make these small towns feel more included? Well, I think first step for me is actually sort of trying to get out with them and find out what exactly it is that they are wanting, and that would involve Hui, you know, actually talking with them. Um, it's it's a very hard issue because obviously the greater ratepayer base is Fokatani and Ohope, um, and um, the smaller areas like Tateko have a smaller ratepayer base of to fund things in, in those areas. Um, but that doesn't mean that things can't be put across a district-wide rate to actually achieve these things. But for me, it's actually getting out and finding out what it is. And I don't think we have operated as well as we could in that space, talking to the other communities. Mm. Russell? Can I just make a point that um, for the past nine years, we've had an urban-based mayor. And it's not surprising to see that there's been a little bit more focus on urban areas. Maybe you need a rural-based mayor. Look, I'm rural. There's no two ways about that. I don't come into Wakatani much at all now. Um, I live out near Titeka. And so... Because they want a roundabout out there. Apparently one was promised some oh, years yeah. ago, <laughs> some <laughs> terms ago, it, but that it, it, it didn't eventuate. Yes, and, and I remember Jean Evers, um, <laughs> bless her soul, uh, hammering me hard about that. In fact, she got me to stand for council back in the year 2004 on that basis. But unfortunately, Tuteco is a state highway. And regarding decisions about roundabouts, that's down to NZTA, and, and they were dead against it, unfortunately. OK, so you're saying we need a rural mayor, not a uh, not, not an urban mayor, Podolt, or you would say we need a Māori mayor? <laughs> I oh, definitely need uh, a Māori mayor. It's all about change. It's all about uh, another a way of uh, philosophy, uh, which is encompassing actually with everybody. Um, and I just wanted to, to make a commitment that uh, we can, as council, uh, look at the the LTP. And um, in, inevitably, I think that's where the, the roading issues as well and the money sits in there within our budget. I think uh, I agree um, with the comments being made that uh, we need to affirm and confirm it. I think we need to go back out to these communities. We need to have input again and ask them, even though the process is done, well, council has the ability now to say, look, these are the expectations. You want us to make some changes? Here we are. 